This is Umar Ahmed for IFL team in association with MTK Global over the phone. I've got a man very much wanted on this channel for a long time. It's been ages. David Higgins, how are you? I'm great, thank you, and good to be back on the channel. Good to have you back, David. Uh, how's everything in Auckland in terms of the situation with coronavirus at the moment? Well, like the whole of New Zealand is in a enforced lockdown right now for at least four weeks, and I think that's the right thing to do. Um, I think New Zealand moved just in time, um, and I think, for example, the United States is, has moved too late, and Trump hasn't taken it seriously enough, so I think they're headed for an apocalyptic situation over there, and you could see martial law in weeks and months to come because of a lack of proper health for everyone and wealthy, etc. When you've got starving populations, crime rates soar and they might need to put the military on the streets. How much has uh, New Zealand been impacted in terms of the amount of people going into hospital and number of deaths so far, David? Oh, look, the, I don't think there's been a death. Um, and there's, you know, there's 500 odd cases. It's changing every day. Um, I think that this will be the biggest recession in the history of the, the world. And the the economic impact could be bigger than World War II. And, and as a recession, I think it could be worse than the Great Depression. Um, it's only really just begun. It's, it's a huge global upheaval that will um, see many households and businesses go bankrupt. And it will see, and also many new opportunities will come out of it. It's going to shake up the world. When did New Zealand and uh, Auckland in specific actually go into lockdown then, David? Uh, oh, a, a few days ago. We're on about day five of lockdown. And when you say a lockdown, are you allowed to go out for exercise or can you just not leave the house at all? They, they, they're saying that you're allowed to go out. One person in your household is allowed to go to the supermarket, being ultra careful, um, they only allow a few people at a time into the supermarket. You've got to keep a few metres distance from other people. They've got plastic screens up at the checkouts. You're allowed to walk around your local area for exercise, but keeping away from other people. You're not meant to drive anywhere. And you're meant to identify a bubble of people that are in the bubble and not go outside your bubble. So my bubble has in it uh, myself, my mother, who's 69, um, my girlfriend and her two-year-old son, and so the idea is that I'm not meant to come on to, into contact with anyone else for at least a month. Now, I think it's going to go longer than a month. I think that the government are saying a month to manage panic because if the government came out and said you're in lockdown for 12 weeks, you know. Um, but look, the cycle of the virus stays um, contagious but undetectable for a couple of weeks. Then it's, it's in its acute phase for maybe a couple of weeks, and then it takes another couple of weeks to show that it's exited the system. So I think for the lockdown, provided everyone adheres to the lockdown, and this applies to the United Kingdom and anywhere, provided people adhere to the lockdown, it can, it can certainly have a massive impact in reducing the, the cases and the deaths. But the lockdown, I think, is going to be longer than the four weeks that governments are suggesting. Situation over there sounds very similar to what's happening in the UK. Again, they've said April time... We'll be back to normal, um, but it, I think it's going to be longer than that. I think the public realise it's going to be longer than that as well. Yeah. I, I, in terms of boxing, I mean, for, for certain sports that have structured seasons, this is a nightmare because they haven't cancelled the whole season or move a whole season um, and it leaves broadcasters without content and some sporting major sporting organisations are on the verge of insolvency and bankruptcy. Um, boxing's actually a better place to come back. So once this is all over, and hopefully sooner rather than later, the beauty of boxing is that um, the likes of Eddie Hearn can immediately match big matchups and put them in a, a stadium where ideally there is no coronavirus or where it's been eradicated. And so the nature of boxing being fluid, the big promoters will have the ability to adapt to um, where the virus has been eradicated and where there's broadcast, et cetera, and where people will buy tickets and can schedule the big events again quite quickly. 
Um, I think it's a lot more difficult if you're, you're moving whole Premier League seasons or NFL or whatever. Um, so I think people just have to be positive and, and patient, um, be kind to each other and um, adhere to the guidelines. I want to discuss uh, Joseph Parker now. Uh, what did you make of his performance last time out in Dallas, David? Oh, I think he did what he had to do. He he was he'd been out of the ring for eight months or so, a bit of ring rust, and the opponent wasn't there to lose. He was one of those guys that backed himself. And he'd come from the mean streets of Chicago. He was there to win, and he wasn't having a backward step. So, uh, but Joseph was dominant um, and won by dominant stoppage got him out of there in the five rounds or so uh, and so we've got to be happy with that um, and he was hoping to back up as soon as possible and be fighting again in June but with the coronavirus situation I think that's optimistic at best um, and that's why I'm leaving Eddie Hearn Frank Smith and Matt Room alone because they've got a lot to deal with and so they don't want to be pestered by every box that they represent so we're realistic so we're going to give them space to, to keep um, for this to, um, to work through this corona situation and then once new cuts are being scheduled and hopefully that's as soon as sort of September or even earlier then my job will be lobbying match room to get Joseph on those cards. Um, his his profile's been kept up in the UK though you might have seen his Love Actually video I don't know if you did but I think the whole world a, saw that Joseph, David yeah yeah he did a parody of the Hugh Grant one and so that's kept him up there and wait till you see the next one that's going to be pumped out tomorrow it's probably going to be even bigger oh i can't wait to see it what was your next sort of move going to be david in terms of an opponent and where you wanted to box in terms of america or the uk um we've we've fought in america uh twice now uh and you know, it would be nice. To, frankly, I think it would be nice to be back in the UK soon. Um, we we like the UK. That Joseph's got a lot of fans there, respected. Um, it's just, a, a, frankly, it's a nicer place to be, especially now with the coronavirus. I mean, an observation I made is that when when I when Joseph's fought in Commonwealth countries, British Commonwealth countries, or former like Australia, New Zealand, the United Kingdom. There's a sort of a, a sort of a respect and a politeness, you know, and with contracts is the spirit of the agreement where you can sort of shake your hand, and make a deal, like um, Eddie and I have done. Uh, but in America, there's, you know, the, even the security environment in Dallas was an eye opener. There's a lot more menace. There's a lot more angry looking security people with guns on their hips. Um, the, the controls around even access to dressing rooms, Joseph's father would say, were ridiculous. Um, and it, it's just a different um, sense of, I guess, menace in the air. And, and now with the coronavirus situation and um, the American states all handling it differently and Trump's shooting from the lip, doing U-turns on policy on a daily basis, there'd be panic setting in. A huge percentage of the population has no health care at all because America doesn't provide um, for, you know, people that don't have private care adequately. And then you add the fact that they're all buying guns at a faster rate than ever, and there's no sort of welfare. And if, if, it, if it drags out, you will have a large proportion of Americans possibly dying or starving or, you know, crime rate goes up. It's the sort of thing that causes revolutions in the past. And so... Um, to answer your question, I'd rather be fighting in Europe, but if, if the, the big opportunity is in the United States, we'll go to the United States. How about in terms of an opponent, David? What names are you looking at? Oh, look, that's a discussion and mutual agreement between Matchroom, Team Parker, and um, and so we, you know, we have to be flexible. Joseph will fight pretty much anyone if the um, deal's right. Um, you know, he's thrown names out, Dillian White, we've been looking for a rematch ever since White got lucky that back then. Um, Chisora, we've been saying we'll fight Chisora for a number of years. Um, if the Usyk opportunity came up, um, you know, rematch with Joshua, we'd love that down the track once Joseph earned the right to have that rematch. Um, like, he'd pretty much fight anyone. And so um, it's really up to Matchroom to engineer the right opportunity and put it in front of us. In terms of Dylan White and Alexander Rusek, they're obviously gunning for world titles. They've got their respective fights coming up whenever they take place and then they are mandatories for world titles. 
What if Derek Chisora were to lose to Alexander Uzik? Would you still fight Derek coming off a loss? Depends on how he lost. I mean, I think the right time for Parker Chisora was was last year or now because, you know, they're both looking good. Um, you know, promotionally it's good. It makes sense now. I think if if uh, Chisora lost to Usyk, it, it dents it a bit. We wouldn't say no, but would it be a main event at O2? I'm not sure. Um, I think it'd be better to make it now. But what I, I, my understanding is that Chisora is going to fight Usyk. Um, you probably know more about where that's at than I would, though. Yeah, that will happen. Whether that happens on its date in May is looking very unlikely at the moment. But that fight will happen. Same with uh, Dylan White, Alexander Povetkin. Them fights will happen, whether it's in the autumn or even later on this year. Um, those fights are, yeah. are done. Okay, well, so then we just have to be realistic and um, look at other opportunities. I mean, things like injuries happen as well. So if any, anyone of those four injured, then Joseph would be perfect to parachute in as a replacement. And you look how Ruiz... Uh, capitalised on that opportunity against Joshua in New York, became world champion for a while. What about someone like Michael Hunter? He's with Matram. Yep, I'm. I'm no expert on. I've never pretended. I'm good. I'm good at the promotional side of making deals and contracts, budgets, etc., lobbying media. But in terms of actual boxing and styles, I'm, I don't pretend to be an expert. That's a question that I defer to our matchmakers or, or Kevin Barry. Um, I understand that Hunter's coming through, and you know, um, he's a name that's been thrown out there. We look at all options really. It's just how it stacks up in terms of style and, and money and, and so forth. All right, David Higgins. Well, I look forward to Joseph's video tomorrow because the first one was very good. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, this one's a, this one's a cracker. You'll like it. Okay, David Higgins. Uh, listen, when this uh, virus passes, we hope to see you and Joseph back in the UK fighting at the O2 or wherever it may be in the UK. And, uh, yeah, once again, thanks for your time. Cool. Thank you very much. Cheers. Cheers, David. Bye. Okay, bye.